Hi, this is Miss Clemmy, and welcome to the podcast on ear anatomy and physiology. I'd like to attract your attention to the far right diagram here. This is a diagram of the modern mammalian ear. Um, you can see kind of where it sits. This is the mandible here. And uh, these are the tiny ear bones that sit along the side near the temporal bone. Um, it makes up the three smallest bones in your body. Now what we see to the left of this picture um, are progressive changes in the mammalian ear over millions of years. We we'll see this far left one, you can see the ear bones were a lot bigger and they were right alongside the jaw. And slowly over time, um, evolution had changed that to move it farther and farther back and those ear uh, bones got smaller and smaller and smaller. So what we're going to look at in addition to those three tiny ear bones here um, are more parts of the ear that actually help us to hear. So let's break the ear anatomy into three regions. The first one that we'll discuss today, the outer ear, and then the middle ear, as well as then the, obviously, the inner ear. Now let's go back here. The outer ear is just for corralling sound waves. And you can see all the little wrinkles and curvature in, in people's ears are perfect for that purpose. And as we move to the middle ear, the middle ear is just a, a middleman for conducting sound between the outer ear and the inner ear. And the inner ear is similar to the retina in, in how, it, how it operates. The inner ear takes those sound waves and actually, um, that conducts, what am I talking about? It actually converts um, the sound waves into electrical impulses that can then be carried to the brain for interpretation. So let's take a closer look at the outer ear. Here I um, have a few parts, anatomical features that need to be identified. The first is the auricle. It's the outer soft cartilage of the ear. And from there we get farther in the ear canal, the external auditory canal, which actually enters in through a hole in your temporal bone. And then the last component of the external ear is the eardrum, also known as the tympanic membrane. Um, and this is a pretty important part of the external ear because it's the one where those sound waves hit and it starts vibrating. Essentially, it's like that first domino in a row of dominoes. Once it gets hit, it sends a chain reaction of events in place. When we move to the middle ear, you can kind of see, orient yourself here. This is the external auditory canal. This is our tympanic membrane. We see those sound waves coming at it, causing the vibrations to begin. And from here, it's just vibrations that are followed in one sequ sequential event. So the vibrations just go from one bone to the other in the middle ear. And these are our ossicles that I had mentioned earlier called the malleus, incus, and stapes. You may also hear them referred to as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup because those are the kinds of tools that they look like that uh, blacksmiths used back in the day. Once the vibration though is carried between those three ear uh, bones, it reaches something called the oval window. It's just a little attachment place for the stapes to attach to the inner ear structures. And there are a couple of other accessory organs in the middle ear that I want to bring to your attention. And the first are the eustachian tubes. Um, sometimes you can get an ear infection here because uh, this is all blocked right here. It usually drains into your throat to help equilibrate pressure on one side of that tympanic membrane. But if it gets blocked with um, uh, and congestion and things from colds, um, oftentimes then bacteria get tra trapped in this area and then that's when you get an ear infection. So that's not a part of the hearing pathway, but it is still a, a component of the middle ear. Another component of the middle ear, I'm just going to show you a little bit better picture of this before I know it says inner ear up here, but we're still on middle ear um, for this component. So I'm going to label that. This is in the middle ear. Um, are the semicircular canals. Now, just like the eustachian tubes, they're not really part of the hearing pathway, but they're part of that middle ear, which is pretty important because these guys have fluid inside them that kind of works like a level to help you maintain your balance. But now, on this same slide, we'll, we'll continue on to the inner ear. And like I had said earlier, the inner ear helps to conduct nerve messages or helps to um, convert them from 
waves into actual electrical impulses. And so we have a couple organs that do that. So after the oval window attaches, what it actually attaches to is something called the cochlea. This is like looks exactly like a snail shell. And it contains a fluid. So if I draw my little waves of fluid here called perilymph, you can imagine they go all the way around, all the way to the inside here. And once the oval window transfers those vibrations, well, you can imagine the waves start making waves. And so what happens is those waves trigger little hairs, little nerve endings called the organ of corti, which is on the outside of the cochlea. And once those little waves or sorry, those little hairs are triggered, that just like our rods and cones in our eye um, starts an action potential. The sodium gates open up and sodium rushes in, et cetera, et cetera. And so that ap action potential is then propagated along the auditory nerve, where then it will go to the temporal uh, lobe in the brain for interpretation. So that's it. All I want to do now is uh, recap the actual hearing pathway. So we started with the auricle to help corral sounds. Those sounds traveled down the external auditory canal where they landed on the tympanic membrane to begin the actual vibration. So that's our outer ear. And then from there, the three small ear bones, the ossicles, conduct those vibrations farther until they reach the oval window. The oval window then transfers those vibrations to the cochlea. Before we get too far, we'll divide that. There's our middle ear. The cochlea contains the fluid called the paralymph, which makes waves, which then trigger the little hairs called the organ of corti inside the cochlea. And then the action potential gets propagated via the auditory nerve to the brain. And then that cochlea makes up through the auditory nerve, makes up portions of the inner ear. And then finally, don't forget about those external or those additional accessory organs um, the semicircular canals for balance and the eustachian tubes to equalize pressure on the inside of the tympanic membrane. That's basic ear anatomy and physiology.